I am Dr. Asif Doja, Pediatric Neurologist and Movement Disorder Specialist at the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario. I'm here to talk to you today about tics and Tourette syndrome. Your child may be having tics. Tics are very common movements in childhood. You can have motor movements such as uh, blinking or shoulder shrugging or facial movements, or you can have noises such as sniffing, throat clearing, or other noises. Tics tend to come and go and change in appearance over time. Sometimes they can get worse and sometimes they can go away uh, for absolutely no reason. Tics are very common in childhood, and up to 20 to 25% of children can have tics at some point in their life. So when something is so common, you have to wonder if it's really a neurologic abnormality or simply a normal part of childhood development. Tics usually start around age 5 or 6, can worsen between ages 10 through 12, and then improves. so that by age 18, most children have significant improvement or complete resolution in their tics. In older children, they can describe a sense of needing to do the tick. This is called an urge. Older children can also suppress their tics. However, many children find it very difficult to suppress their tics, just like an itch that you have to scratch. They have to do the movement. Many children also find that telling them to stop doing the tics can actually make them worse. As mentioned, tics can wax and wane and change in appearance over time. Sometimes they can get worse due to anxiety or stress. Now, it's not anxiety or stress that causes tics, it's just that anxiety or stress can make them worse. Sometimes tics can worsen, however, for absolutely no reason. The diagnosis of tics is quite straightforward. If children have movements or noises that change in appearance over time, that they have an inner urge to do, and that are suppressible. To be diagnosed with Tourette syndrome, you need to have multiple movements and noises that occur for over a year. A lot of the media focuses on swearing in Tourette syndrome, but this is actually quite uncommon. If you have just movements or just noises that have been present for over a year, that would be diagnosis of persistent tic disorder. But whether you have a diagnosis of Tourette syndrome or persistent tic disorder, the outcome is still the same. Most children by age 18 have significant improvement or resolution in their tics. There is usually no indication for doing any other tests such as MRIs or CT scans in patients who have tics. Unless tics are bothering the patient, we don't usually initiate any sort of treatment. This is because medication treatment for tics never takes tics away completely. The medication can reduce the frequency or the intensity of the tics, but it never takes them away completely. Also, because tics come and go and change in appearance over time, it's often difficult to tell whether medication is working or not. Of all the patients who I see at the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario, 9 to 95% do not take any medication for the tics. The only thing that takes tics away completely is time and waiting to see if children will outgrow them. Some parents worry about teasing or bullying associated with the tics. Usually if the kids are worried about their tics, I usually tell them they can discuss the tics with their close friends. They can say that the tics are something they can't control, that are harmless, and that certainly the other children can't catch the tics from them. If there is teasing or bullying going on in school, sometimes the best way to address this is with education. Sometimes the children can give a presentation to the other students, or even the teacher could speak about Tourette syndrome. Other options would be the parents coming into the classroom, or having someone from Tourette Canada coming in to give a presentation. If you do want to consider medication for tics, the first line of treatment is with a class of medications called alpha agonists. These are medications that are used to treat blood pressure, but for reasons that are not quite clear, they also help tics. The two medications in this class are called guanfacine and clonidine. The main side effects of these medications are sedation and lightheadedness. The other class of medications that can be used for tics are in the family of atypical antipsychotics, but in this case they're not being used for psychosis or schizophrenia, they're being used to treat tics. These medications have considerably more side effects, including weight gain, problems with your cholesterol and lipid counts, problems with the hormone in the brain called prolactin, and sometimes the emergence of other abnormal movements that could even be permanent. Behavior therapy is another option for the treatment of tics. This has to be done through a trained professional who is experienced in treating tics and Tourette syndrome with behavior therapy. But just like medication, this does not take tics away completely. It does teach children, however, to convert a particularly bothersome tic into a less bothersome tic. There are some suggestions that this behavior therapy may be as effective as medications. Behavior therapy only works, however, in patients who are over nine years of age who are motivated to do the behavior therapy to help their tics.
The other thing to consider with tics is that children often have comorbidities. These are other coexisting disorders that can occur in patients who have tics or Tourette syndrome. Common comorbidities include attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, anxiety, depression, learning problems, behavior problems, and sleep problems. It's important to consider all of these comorbidities when assessing a child with tics or Tourette syndrome. This is because studies have shown that often it's these comorbidities as opposed to the tics themselves that actually impact on quality of life. It's very important that your physician try and recognize and treat any comorbidities that are present. Usually you start with the one that's interfering with your life first and tackle that. Often when you make a list of the different areas that are interfering with the child's functioning, the tics are actually the lowest on the list. So in summary, tics are very common in childhood. They are quite harmless, they get better over time, and they often require no intervention. It's important for physicians to screen children with tics and Tourette syndrome for the comorbidities to see if they may be impairing functioning more than the tics themselves.